Hi friends, welcome back to God's Garden Bench. In this video, we're going to do some garden planning. Now garden planning looks different for me every year as I'm still trying to figure out what works in my garden and I change the garden spaces. So garden planning is a little bit of a fluid thing, but I'm gonna bring you along this year for 2023 on my spring and summer garden. So I'm gonna show you what seed varieties I'm planting, rough sketches on where everything is going to be located, um, how my gardens are laid out, and just kind of what my process is this year. Um, it's amazing how in gardening you learn year to year what works and what doesn't, and so that is what I do as well. I just I just um, kind of go with it, and some years I've really gone with it <laughs> and regretted it, and other years have been really strict, and also that just hasn't worked. So just trying to figure out what works best for me in my planning style. Um, I'm going to bring you along for the ride. Okay guys, so this is a rough sketch of my arbor garden. So as you can see, I have eight total beds that are eight feet by four feet. Now some of them may be a little bit longer, shorter, um, skinnier, but this is just roughly the configuration of my arbor garden and the beds in there. Now these four in the middle are all wooden. So they are the non-treated wooden um, beds, whereas the outside four are cinder blocks. So anything that I put on the outside will not be edible because I do not want to eat um, anything that comes out of a cinder block garden. Um, so Anything that I will eat are, is going to be in the middle four and then mostly flowers all around the outside, which is absolutely beautiful. That's what I did last year and it was absolutely stunning. So currently I have a climbing rose right here on, on this arbor and a climbing rose here coming up the other side. I had a clematis plant here last year. I don't know whether it's still alive, but we'll see what that one does here in the spring if it actually comes back. I planted cypress vine all along this side of this arbor. This arbor is actually like the length of this whole four feet. Um, so there's cypress vine all along this side and it covered most of the arbor last year. And it, it reseeded even during the season last year. So I don't know whether it's going to reseed again because I'm going to amend this bed. So I'm not quite sure how that's going to work with the reseeding. But if it does reseed, I'm going to let it do its thing. As far as the other arbors, the other archways, I am going to plant cucumbers in the summer and then peas somewhere on one of them in the spring. So that's my plan for those. As well as the cherry tomato last year did so well on the arbor that I might just do that again just for fun um, and see how it does when I actually plan that process happening. Now as far as this bed and this bed, so bed two and bed six, I will be planting my cool weather crops with row covers to see if I can get them to figure out how to grow or <laughs> more like help me figure out if that works for them. So I'm gonna do like cabbages, cauliflower, broccoli, um, Swiss chard, spinach, and carrots I think are going to be over here in this little section. I have a great uh, soil type here for carrots, so I think that's where I'm gonna plant my carrots. And then um, this half of this bed is strawberries, and then this whole bed is strawberries. So I'm just gonna leave those. There are a few couple blank spots in this bed, but I think I'm just gonna let the strawberries take over. I'm gonna thin out the strawberries that, um, runnered last year and probably fill out this bed with strawberries. Now as far as the flower beds, my plan is to do, as I said, all flowers. Now I had a sunflower that did amazing right here and I'll put pictures in. Um, it was it was incredible. I've never seen a sunflower get so big and have so many blooms on it. So I'm I'm trying to decide whether I want to do sunflowers in just both of these beds or whether I'm going to do sunflowers in just one. Um, but ugh, I just love sunflowers so much. It quite possibly will be both and then I might plant lower flowers, lower, lower growing flowers around on each side. 
Um, I know I have gladiolus in the back of this bed and in the back of this bed. So I have to also consider that as well, which I think the gladiolas will come up before the sunflowers really get established, but I, I will still consider the fact that they are in the ground there. So the front beds, I think I'm going to do just mainly zinnias and cosmos and marigold um, and just fill it with color, fill it with big, beautiful green, flower covered plants and just kind of let this space be a beautiful representation of God and his beauty, which granted vegetables are absolutely that as well, but there is nothing like having vegetables and flowers growing next to each other. It is just amazing. So when the cool weather crops are done, I'll probably plant flowers here as well so that I can enjoy another um, planting of flowers here. So as these are kind of dying back, these will hopefully just be getting going. Granted, that may change if I decide I want something edible there, we will go ahead and plant something edible uh, there as well. Now, the way that the sun works in this garden is it starts here and moves across the space like this. So the garden gets a lot of sun almost constantly. Now, this garden is right beside my house. So the way that the shade of the house works is it shades only in the morning hours. It's by about 10:30 or so that the garden is all in sun. But up until then, this portion of the garden is being shaded, which in the summertime is really nice for sitting on the garden bench and viewing the garden. It's absolutely incredible. But I do have to consider that whenever I'm thinking and whenever I'm planning what I'm going to be putting in these in these beds just because of that little bit of variation in sunlight if I put something here that likes more shade this one gets sun all day like from the time the sun comes up over the treetops here it's going to get sun all day until it goes down over the treetops here which is a while it is a good I would say 10 to 12 hours of sunlight so I have to consider that as I'm planning my garden, as I'm laying everything out. Um, okay, so this section is gonna be me going through my seeds and I have quite a few of them as I look around. So I'm just gonna go through each seed packet and tell you what I plan on planting this year. Um, and let's just jump right into it because there's quite a few. So I'm gonna start with flowers. So the first thing is Cosmos. I love Cosmos. They did so well for me this past year. This this last growing season was the first year that I did Cosmos and I was so impressed by their beauty. So they will absolutely gain a spot in the garden um, this year. The next one is my tried and true. I absolutely love this flower every single shape, size, color, height, everything about it I love, and that is zinnias. So I have quite a few different varieties of zinnia from all different um, seed companies. And this, this company, this actually just came from the dollar store and it did really well last year. I was highly impressed. Um, so once again, they've gained a spot in my garden for sure. First of all, because they're zinnias and second of all, because they did really well. This one from Baker Creek, as you can see, I have used many times before and they're really pretty. It's um, called Persian carpet and they don't carpet as much as you would think. Um, when I first bought them, I thought that they would spread and be um, shorter. But they're still a pretty good height, um, but they put off more um, little smaller flowers, but they're still beautiful, beautiful accent in the, in the garden, but they are still a sizable plant. So do keep that in mind if you choose to go with that one. This one is one of my favorite. I absolutely love this. This zinnia is absolutely stunning in the garden. The color, the texture, 
the size. It puts off so many plant flowers. Oh, it will have a place in my garden for as long as I garden and as long as I can either save the seeds or get the seeds, that flower will have a place in my garden. These are very cool as well. Um, they're just really fun looking. Um, also, they all look very different. It's quite interesting how that happens. Um, each color kind of has their own little mood, which is, is really fun. So I enjoy those. I will keep those around in the garden as well. Here's another one. Once again, these are all zinnias. As you can see, I absolutely love zinnias. Each one of these has a special place in my heart. As you can see, the packets are all opened and I've been planting them for years. So this one is candy cane. This one's really fun too. Um, especially if you have, you know, people who haven't really ever seen lots of different kinds of flowers. That one's just, that one will catch their eye for sure. And they'll be like, Ooh, what is that? Um, because it really does look very candy cane esque. And one year I had an all red one, deep color red. And it was beautiful. Um, and it just had like a couple little flakes of white. Mm touched my soul for sure. Um, so last zinnia, which let's just be honest, it's probably not going to be the last one. I'm probably going to get more zinnia seeds because they're zinnias. Um, but this one's really pretty as well. This color is beautiful. It's that like peachy pink coral color that just, oh, just woos the soul. So this one are sweet peas. I've tried to grow these before and did not have very much luck with them. Um, but I'm going to try them again. I'm going to try them on some of my trellises in the Arbor Garden along with my edible peas and see how they do. I, I'm going to give them another shot. I only have a couple of the seeds left. This is an older packet. Um, and see how they do. Every, every other garden video that I watch raves about sweet peas. I don't know if I have the right climate for them to do really well, um, but we're going to give them another go this year and see how they do. <clears throat> so the next one in the flower department is sunflowers. Now I said in a different part of the video that I was going to plant lots of sunflowers this year and I mean it. I think I'm going to plant them in both the arbor garden as well as the log garden. I just love sunflowers. Sunflowers have a very special place in my heart. Um, they represent my mom in a lot of ways. And so I'm going to plant lots of them. I've tried sunflowers in the past, um, before my soil was good or as good as it is now. I think it was the first year that I was here at this property. I tried to plant them just in the native soil and they were not pleased. They tried for sure. Um, and they were beautiful, but it, it was nothing like the one that I got last year. Last year I planted that one um, in one of the raised beds just to try to save its life and it was epic. It was so beautiful. So now I know what sunflowers are capable of. I'm gonna go ahead and give them another go this year in some good soil um, and so I'm really excited about that. So first one is the mammoth sunflower. Now this one is supposed to get absolutely gigantic um, of seven to 12 feet tall. I have never grown this one successfully, um, but we shall see how it does. I'm pretty excited to see how that looks. Oh my goodness. Seven to 12 feet tall. So that one will gain its spot in the log garden just because it's going to have more space back there. So then the next one, as you can see, I've planted this one before is sunflower mixed colors. So this one's a mixed bag. Um, and I just, just any sunflower, any sunflower I just think is absolutely beautiful. I think the year that I planted that one, I got this really deep red oh, and it was beautiful. So I'm excited to, to do that one. Now I think that the one that did really, really well last year was this moonshine. Yeah. Moonshine. Um, and it was just epic. It was so cool. Now it didn't have this really defined dark circle, um, inner part of the flower. The words are the name of it's leaving me at the moment. Um, and the petals were not as rich of a yellow, but it was still absolutely beautiful. So here's kind of another mixed one called fun, sunny hybrid mix. So once again, 
maybe this exact same thing, just a different name. And I'm pretty sure this is the red one. And I tried to plant these last year and they did not do well in the place that I had. And they actually, when they flowered, it wasn't red at all. So I don't know whether a seed got mixed up or what, but we're gonna try again this year because why not? So here's another one. This one is Evening Sun. Oop. So once again, these are all just, um, oh, repeat of, these are all just sunflowers that I'm going to plant kind of in different areas throughout the garden just to add some sunniness and some gorgeous pops of color. And the, the, the plants are actually quite striking as well, especially when they get as big as that last one last season. So this is Dwarf Incredible. Now this will be my third year trying to grow this variety. No, I take it back. This one is actually really good. I've planted this in my raised beds before and it did really well. Um, and they are pretty short. Um, two foot, two feet is the height that they get. I think mine got a little bit taller than that because I had them in some really good soil. Um, but even still, I had it in a raised bed on a corner and it was beautiful. So these are the Dwarf Incredible. So they will absolutely gain a spot in my garden for as long as I can find the seeds. Um, I think I saved the seeds one year from this one and it's in a Ziploc bag somewhere. <laughs> um, but they're they're beautiful and they have a nice big size flower on them with it being a dwarf variety i thought that it was going to be you know like a small little flower no like the flower is pretty big and it's beautiful so that is it for the sunflowers next we will move on to i'm just gonna keep moving on through oh i do have some more flowers so marigolds marigolds are really great for um, like a trap plant for the Japanese beetles. I have a Japanese beetle problem like no other around here. Um, and I'm sure lots of other people who grow in and around my area. I mean, really, I think it's like the lower 48 states on the East Coast just get hammered with Japanese beetles. So um, this I find to be a great plant to deter them. Now, last year, they didn't bloom fast enough for the Japanese for it to do their job. Um, so I'm not quite sure. Maybe I just didn't seed them soon enough or the weather just wasn't quite right for them to bloom fast enough. But I'm ever looking for a Japanese beetle solution. And one of the years, this was it for me. Um, the Japanese beetles were demolishing the marigold plants and leaving the other plants around them alone. Um, and then the marigolds, once the Japanese beetles went away, um, the marigolds bounced right back and were even better than before. So marigolds are absolutely beautiful as well as they're edible. I have not been brave enough to try them yet, <laughs> um, but they are edible as well, make beautiful um, additions to a salad or, you know, garnish. So marigolds will absolutely be in my garden as well. And the last, well, the last flower flower that I have is straw flowers. Um, well, or helichrysum, helichrysum. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly. Um, but these are beautiful. I absolutely love them. Um, and once again, for as long as they will grow in my garden, I will give them a space in my garden. Um, the first year that I grew them, they did really, really well. Last year, they took a long time to um, take off, but I think because my chickens kept scratching up the seeds. So I'm gonna try them again this year, give them lots of love and tender care, and hope that they come to fruition. I really want to harvest some of them and then hang them or keep them inside in a bouquet so they just stay gorgeous for as long as possible. Okay, so the next one, I know that this is kind of, it doesn't have a picture, but this is called, this is Borage. And the Borage was great last year. Um, this is the, f last year was the first year that I grew Borage and it was beautiful and really unique. So I will absolutely grow Borage again this year, as well as it's edible and has some um, like herbalist um, properties. So uh, medicinal properties. So I'm excited to use that and educate myself a little bit more on that. 
The next one is peas, just because it's next in my line. Um, little snap pea crunch. Um, I haven't had very much luck growing peas in my area. I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but I'm going to give it another shot this spring and see how they do and see if we can actually get some peas, like enough peas to put in the freezer is what my goal is. Okay, no. Firstly, it's enough peas to eat fresh, and then if I can get enough to put in the freezer, I will be happy with that. And I actually just made an order for a few different varieties of peas as well. So I'm excited to have those come. So my other ones are Cascadia Sugar Snap. So we have that one. I'm gonna mispronounce this, I think. Burbina Early. So I have a couple different, I'm just really trying to nail down what grows best in my area because whichever one does, I'm gonna stick with. This is a Snowbird and Sugar Daddy. And I think the ones that I ordered were Sugar Ann and Super Sugar Ann. Um, so I'm hoping that one of these just one i mean i'd be happy if all of them did fantastic but i just need one to do really well um because i really i love peas and i love fresh peas oh they're just the best so i'm really hoping that that works out for me so the next one is spinach so this is another one that has not done very well for me um actually the next couple things I've struggled with for sure. So I'll bring you along on my journey and <laughs> hopefully we can figure it out all together. So is spinach. So this one is the America spinach. Once again, whichever one works and decides to thrive in my environment and my gardening style is gonna be the one that I stick with. Um, at least for a little bit because I've struggled so much with them. Bloomsdale longstanding. Once again, I'm trying to keep it pretty simple with these. Um, you know, like the ones that are pretty popular, tried and true for every uh, every other gardener to see if I can figure it out. Because once again, I really love these foods and I really would love to have them growing in my garden and not have to grow them or get them from the grocery store. So I'm really doing my best to try to grow them here. Um, the next one I have quite a few of is carrots, are carrots. Um, I love carrots. I use carrots a lot in my cooking and so I'm desperate to try to grow lots of them and store lots of them. It is once again one of the ones that just I just cannot seem to figure out how to do well. So the first one is tender sweet. The next one is purple elite. I have Danvers half long. And as you can see, some of these are opened because I have tried to plant them before. <laughs> Another Tender Sweet, which I think is a different brand. Yeah. So I have one Burpee Tender Sweet and one Fairy Morse. Nanty's Half Long. I think maybe the same thing applies. Petite Sweet Little Fingers, which my mom recommends. Now my mom grows out in the Pacific Northwest. So just to give you some context of where she's growing that's different than me. Um, Scarlet Nanties and Nanties Half Long, which I think I already have. So those are the carrot varieties that I'm going to try. And I think once again, whichever one works, I'm gonna stick with. Now, I have this currently growing in the garden. It's been knocked back quite a few times by the frost, but they are, they're just little shoots right now. And I'm really hopeful that when it gets a little bit warmer and we stop getting freezes, that this one's gonna really take off and I'm going to have kale to munch on out of the garden. But I'm really looking forward to having plenty once again to eat. Um, it's one that I've had success with, kale in general but not as much the varieties that I actually would like to eat. I think the one is like ru red Russian or curly maybe. And I don't love the texture of those as much. So I really want to get successful at growing the ones that I actually enjoy to eat. Um, 
I'm only going to do, mm, I'm not even going to say that right now. I might do a couple different lettuces, but this is the one that I have planned for right now. Um, and we might add some to that, but I'm not positive as of right now. Stay tuned. Now, as I go through these seeds, these are all the ones that I have right now. I very well could add or subtract to some of this plan as well. So we, we shall see. I will try to keep you as updated as possible um, as I go through them. So cabbage is another one. Cabbage I love, obviously. And then I have had a hard time with this one as well. The first time the cabbage moths just destroyed them. So this year I'm going to put some fabric over and some hoops over to help them hopefully have a fighting chance. I'm really gonna give it my all with the cool weather crops this year because I love all of them and I would really like to figure it out. I've struggled definitely with the um, cool weather crops. So that is going to be my focus this year to see if I can try to figure out how to grow them. So I have a couple different varieties once again because I want to see if I can figure out which one works best for me and for my growing area. So the first one is Early Golden Acres. And then I have an All Seasons. This one um, was very intriguing to me when I first saw the package because I, you know, I was like, hey, All Seasons, that could be much better for me in my growing area um, because it could withstand maybe a little bit more heat. That was my thought. So we shall see how it does. Um, I've heard that red cabbage is much better for pest pressure um like the pests don't aren't as interested in it so i am really excited about that i hope that is actually true the first year that i tried growing it was this last fall and we all saw how my poor poor little seedlings did so i have a couple more of those that i'm gonna try to pop in and then early early anna so we're gonna try all of those and hope that one of them succeeds because we love some cabbage around here. So the next one is this, oh, this is a flower. Mm, I'm, I'm sorry, but here we go. Um, I saved the seeds from a purple blue button that bloomed in my wild, from my wildflower seed packet from the, the um, dollar store. And it was beautiful. So I saved the seeds and I'm hoping, don't mind the bag. I'm hoping that it, it reseeds and, and it's that beautiful purple again. And then there's one other one that I saved and it's called Rabbit's Foot Clover. And if you are in the Southeastern Virginia area, you may um, recognize it or know exactly what I'm talking about. It just grows wild in my area, um, but it's so beautiful. These little, beautiful little puffs. Um, I don't even know how else to describe it. If I can find a picture, I'll try to put it up on the screen. Um, but oh, it's just, it's so, so, so cute. So I'm, I saved the seeds. I'm hoping that it will seed. I mean, I think that it will just because it grows wild around here and any weed just seems to, you know, have it all figured out. So I'm going to do that. And then the next one is bunching onions. Now I'm hoping that actually reminds me, I need to add that. I'm hoping to grow um, bulbed onions as well. Um, but I thought, why not throw some bunching onions in there as well? Swiss chard. I love Swiss chard, it's so yummy. So we're gonna try that. I've had great success with Swiss chard um, in the past. So that's a tried and true for me. The next one is okra. Now, I don't grow okra as much to eat as I grow it because it's beautiful. I love the plant itself. I should say the tree itself because they get huge. Um, and the flowers and the fruit there. It's just, it's such a beautiful plant. I cannot say that I love to eat okra. So I just donate it to other people who do love to eat okra. Um, so this burgundy, what is it? Burgundy red, I think. Um, has been my favorite because the, the the flowers oh and the pods they're just it's just a stunning plant 
it's actually related to the hibiscus, I believe. So if you can, if you can picture a hibiscus. Um, and so these are ones that I saved from last year. So I will be interested to see if those grow. Okay, so while editing this video, I realized that I had missed a couple of their varieties of seeds as well as I ended it super abruptly. So here I am again, this is editing me. Um, I missed broccoli and cauliflower. This um, is another one that has not grown successfully for me. So I am looking forward to growing this one successfully as well. So we have broccoli sun king hybrid and once again i'm just looking for one that grows well for me in my climate or my climate in my growing zone as well as in my garden and i will stick with it oh i'm gonna not pronounce this one correctly again deciso deciko as you can see i've grown this one before or tried Waltham, I think is how you say that. Another Sun King hybrid that I opened. So I have two of those that are opened. Um, and then cauliflower. So I have snowball cauliflower. And then some radishes. I don't love radishes just to eat them normally but I hear that they're delicious pickled. So I really would like to try that. So I'm just gonna grow one um, variety of radishes. Also radishes are really good for flea beetles uh, as a trap plant for flea beetles. I found that out last year in my log garden. The flea beetles were attacking my, wait for it, squash? Melons, the melons, like watermelons and cantaloupes and stuff like that. Well, they were really little. Um, and so I did a little bit of research and radishes, they love radishes and they will all, all, they will oftentimes, excuse me, um, prioritize radishes over any other plant and the radishes didn't seem to be harmed by them. So they did absolutely go for the radishes, but the radishes grew massively and I let them go to seeds so that I could see the, the flowers and stuff. And it was a great experience. So. This will be a dual purpose. Um, I'm going to harvest some of them as well as plant them for a trap crop. Last one are beets. Now these are, this is the last one that I have in my little collection here. I'm getting more um, seeds and will most likely acquire more before I actually put seeds in the ground. But like I said in an earlier part of this video, I will do my best to keep you guys updated. Um, and it'll probably be like, as I'm seeding, it'll be like, oh yeah, look at this new variety. <laughs> um, but radish it or, um, beets. So this is kind of the same thing. I, I like beets. I love pickled beets. Pickled beets are the best in my opinion. Um, but they're also really good for you. So I'm determined to like them more than I, I already do unpickled. So there we go. All right, guys, that is it for this video. This is my garden planning technique for 2023. Um, and I will bring you along for the planting process as well. If you have any questions, concerns, advice, anything, leave them in the comments below. I am open to it. I want to know. I want to learn. Thank you guys so much for being here and watching. And I hope you guys have an amazing garden planning experience for yourself. And if you want to share it with me, please do. I would love to see your gardens. I would love to see your plans. I think that all of us coming together and helping each other is the best way to be successful. Thank you for watching.